This episode is brought to you by HP. When you're working apart from your team, feeling connected can be a challenge. Presenting HP Presence, a more thoughtful, human collaboration technology. With enhanced audio and video features, you can experience more genuine collaboration and feel more connected. Be in the room, from any room, with HP Presence. Learn more at hp.com forward slash presence. This storm will be remembered for the massive number of trees it destroyed, that's for sure. At that time, and according to the National Forest Service, it was the worst loss of timber in the country. Hi, I'm Chris May, writer, producer, and host of This Day in Weather History, now in its second year from the Weather Network in Canada. A Weather Bureau observer for the North Head Station wrote an official report on the storm and reflected upon its drama. It was, to say the least, a harrowing story. This Day in Weather History. Back in the October 12th episode of this podcast, I told the story of the Columbus Day storm of 1962, which is the only storm that was stronger than this one. They called it the Great Olympic Blowdown, but it had nothing at all to do with sporting events. This was in reference to the mountains of the U.S. Pacific Northwest in the state of Washington. It was also referred to as the Big Blow. This intense yet compact windstorm struck the coast of Washington with great vengeance, On January 29th of 1921, there were already weather warnings for wind that were being rolled out. The pressure of the low in question continued to fall rapidly until about 2 p.m. that day, when it seemed that the center of the low had been reached and the pressure fell very slowly. So at that point, the observer with their partner that was at the office, they decided to leave to run errands and it was on the return trip where everything, everything went wrong. The wind really ramped up and hammered the area with stronger gusts. They kept on carefully, but along that path, trying to get back, they witnessed the following. Welcome to year two of this podcast. Right now, you're listening to the full version of today's story on your favorite podcast provider. But there's also the daily podcast video short. They're shot right here in my podcast recording studio, so you get that perspective. But oftentimes, they will include visuals from that day's event from when it happened in weather history. So after listening to the full story, go check out the podcast video short on television or online anytime at theweathernetwork.com forward slash weather history. The top of a rotted tree breaks off and falls out of sight in the brush. A telephone pole was dropped across the roadway and brought their car to a screeching halt. Then a short distance beyond that pole, a massive spruce tree fell and blocked the road again. They decided at this point, it was time to leave their car. They ran down the road in the direction of where they felt the density of forest was lighter so nothing else was gonna fly or fall. Just after leaving the car, however, they witnessed a tree limb sailing through the air toward them, narrowly missing them and killing them both. The southeast wind continued to roar through the forest. Trees crashed to the ground in every direction from where they were trying to escape injury. A giant spruce fell across the roadway, burying itself through the planks within a short proximity from where they were standing next. The tops of three trees broke off and sailed through the air. Some of it fell with a crash and others toppled over slowly as their roots were literally torn up from the earth. Later in the afternoon, the wind shifted to the south and the intensity of the stained winds decreased to 100 miles or 160 kilometers per hour. Oh, wait a minute. The winds decreased. You call decreasing down to 160 kilometers per hour a decrease? They knew that this storm was the worst severe storm the state had suffered in that coastal area by the mouth of the Columbia, I might add, in the past 200 years. Let's now survey the destruction. Hurricane force winds destroyed billions of board feet of timber all across the Olympic Peninsula. Over 40% of the trees on the southwest side of the Olympic Mountains were blown down. The Great Olympic Blowdown felled eight times more trees than the eruption of Mount St. Helens back on March 27th of 1980. A herd of 200 Roosevelt elk were killed by falling tree branches and flying debris, which was also responsible for the loss of an additional hundreds of domestic farm animals. In all, 16 homes in La Push were destroyed. Power and telephone lines were downed everywhere. Moored boats were crushed up against the beaches that they were tied to. 
21 barges were set adrift in Puget Sound after breaking from their mooring lines. Smokestacks and chimneys collapsed, and this resulted in a tragic fatality when Chief Engineer Alfred Anderson was killed in one of the mills when one of the collapsing smokestacks filled the room with steam, and it scalded Chief Anderson to death. The loss to the timber industry was catastrophic from this powerful windstorm this day in weather history. Hey, do you like the podcast? We'd love to hear from you. If you have an idea, go right now to wherever you're listening to me and rate us if you would, please. It's on a five-star system and we would love as many stars as you can afford. So rate us, but then also review us. This way we can always stay on top of how you'd like to see the show evolve. Then remember to subscribe to this podcast. Click the subscribe or follow button right there on the very same podcast homepage you're listening on. You'll be immediately reminded that the next day is ready to listen to and you also have access to every episode in the archives. It dates back to June 1st of 2020, so there is a lot that we got to get caught up on on this day in weather history. Tomorrow is January 30th, and we will be investigating the disappearance of the city of Boston. (laughs) Woo, Boston has had some real historic fun this month in weather history. Remember back on the 15th of this month, they were literally buried in molasses, and now they completely disappeared? You just never know what will happen next when a podcast covers a story for each of a 365 or 366 day calendar year. You gotta be guaranteed some weird ones are gonna pop up. With me, your host, Chris May. <laughs>